So, it says, And when the chief priest and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. So here these children are crying this out, and the Pharisees and the leaders, uh, they didn't like it. Why? Because they knew that that was a fulfillment of Scripture. Now watch, because he goes on. He says in, uh, where are we at? Yeah, in verse 16. And said unto him, so now the Pharisees, scribes, they all came to him, and they said, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, yes. Have you never read, and this is out of Psalm, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Perfected praise. Now notice, but they knew these children were quoting Scripture. And they knew the children didn't know the Scripture, so they knew it was God doing it. And they said, stop this. You need to stop this. Don't, don't, do you not hear what they're saying? And they were almost saying, these, these children, they're, they're practically blaspheming because they're applying this to you. And he said, have you not read? Have you not heard before? That out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Now, these are the words of Jesus, so we know they're accurate, right? But now look, go with me to Psalm 8. Psalm 8. I'm going to start in verse 1. Now, this is the psalm that Jesus quoted from just now in Matthew 21. So he says, O Lord, verse 1, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Here's the verse Jesus quoted. Now watch this. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. Now, wait a minute. Jesus said you perfected praise. Did Jesus twist the scripture? Or did he give us the interpretation, the accurate interpretation of the scripture? Well, we know it's a second because he was the word of God made flesh, right? But notice what he says. Out of the mouth and babes, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength. So now notice, Jesus said in Matthew, perfected praise. Here he says, you've ordained strength, which is right, both. Why? Because when you have perfected praise, in other words, whenever you are doing praise truly out of your heart, strength is released and ordained on your behalf. Praise is not just words. Praise is going up to God and God says, I'm releasing, I'm ordaining strength. Why? Notice why. Because of your enemies. Nick, watch this. Because of your enemies. Why? That you might still stop, bring to a halt the enemy and the avenger. So what does praise from the heart do? It stops the enemy and the avenger. You say, well, isn't an avenger an enemy? We well, say, well, yeah, but it's a different type of enemy. See, an enemy just attacks you for no reason. They just hate you, don't like you, and they just attack you. But an avenger, see, an avenger comes to avenge. What does that mean? That means whenever you mess up, whenever you make a mistake, you do something wrong, the avenger comes to try to avenge the wrong you've done. But here Jesus just said, listen, if you will perfect praise, if you'll give praise out of your heart, I will release strength that will stop the enemy that attacks just for the sake of attacking, and I'll even stop the avenger that comes when you mess up. Amen? Now, you know, it's bad enough to have an enemy that attacks when he just wants to attack, but we can pinpoint sometimes why the avenger would come because we know when we've messed up. Amen? But he said, when you perfect praise to him, well, there's a difference between praise and worship, okay? Worship is telling God how great he is and how awesome he is because of what he is and who he is. Praise is telling God how good he is for everything he has done, is doing, is, and is going to do. See, that's what praise does, right? So, so how do you use praise to stop the enemy and the avenger? Well, you start to praise God and tell him, who shall I be afraid of? Just like we sang in the song. Why? We, I don't have to fear anything. Why? Because you're a great God. You're my protector. You always have protected me. You're protecting me now, and you're going to protect me. And you, you literally create a barrier around you that the enemy and the avenger cannot get through. 
right? And that barrier through your praise is your shield of faith because that's what the enemy shoots the darts at that hits your shield of faith. And that shield of faith shall quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. Amen? Amen. So you, now, here's the thing. See, there are things you don't even know the enemy's trying to do. But there's times whenever you have to use your faith and you can feel those darts hitting your shield of faith. And you know I'm under attack. But guess what? It's just hitting my faith. It ain't touching me. Amen? And your faith is there. Amen? And whenever you walk in faith, you keep that shield up. And I'm telling you, it just, it, there's, the enemy just can't get to you. There are several scriptures. I don't have time for it. But there are several scriptures that tells you how to stay protected, how to stay in the protection of God, how to never fall, how to never be unfruitful, how to never be barren of producing the fruit of God in your life. There's scriptures that actually tell you how to do that. And so, again, we don't have time, but I've, I've taught it before. But anyway, uh, there, God has made ways not just to get you out of trouble, but to keep you out of trouble. 